Alrighty, guys. Next up, we got a clip from Hafiz from the Roommates podcast. He was asked why a man who's making three hundred thousand dollars a year shouldn't go the way of Dan Brazilian and you know just travel the world and sleep around. And this was uh, his response. What What was that guy's name? Hafiz. No, not him. The, shouldn't go the way of Dan who? Brazilian. <laughs> Bilzerian. Oh, Bilzerian. <laughs> This is it. you guys missed it, but before we went live, uh, Pete, what what did you call it? It went in the in a right, yeah, itasles. It's like I'm gonna read the itasles words in our note app. I'm like like itasles, the uh, you, the the famous Greek philosopher. Itasles. He's like, oh, italics, italicized. <laughs> it's like yes, all right. Pete's pizza. Uh, I don't know. He didn't have his raw beef liver today. I'm apparently. still waking up because I I hit snooze too many times. So <laughs> all right. All right. At a, we had a live show, and a guy asked me a question. He said, "He said, you know, I'm making three hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm living my best life. This, that, and the third. Why should I not travel the world, bang chicks, and sow my royal oats?" So <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> And I and I and I initially, you know, gave him I gave him um, my thoughts about about it. Then uh, then Chris was sharing for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I stopped, <clears throat> and I said, "You know what? I was wrong about what I just said." What I think you should do, what I believe you should do as a man, I was wrong, is do exactly that. You have your money, travel the world, do exactly what's on your heart. But here's what's gonna happen. 30 years down the line, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna be at, I'm gonna be doing a, 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 a speech. Mm -hmm. I wanna bring you on stage. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a microphone, I'm gonna have a microphone. Mm -hmm. Tell me how your life turned out, and I'll tell the world how my life turned out, and we'll be the judge. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, I thought I thought the roommates were kind of for that lifestyle. I don't really know no. them that well. They're not. Oh. No. Okay. No, they're, they're actually, you know, it's kind of funny. They had a Michaela Peterson interview, and Michaela Peterson just before was had an interview with Rolo. Uh-huh. And I guess she didn't really know who Rolo was and, like, what <laughs> his values were. And she's like, oh... These are not really quite as aligned with mine as I thought. So she was on the podcast with the roommates and the roommates were like, yeah, that's, we don't talk about like that part of the manosphere because it's not really aligned with what we want to do. So apparently they're, huh. they're pretty square, apparently. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. But I mean, I get what he was saying there about this idea of, you know, hey, you should, you should actually just go do it because... I don't know if he really means that. I think he wants what's best for the guy. So, you know, right. obviously he, he recommended he he go a different route. But like the reason why he might recommend that is because some guys they just they just don't believe that that wouldn't be the best thing ever. And you kind of gotta experience it, I think. You gotta have um those experiences of maybe you don't have to. If you can't imagine it, but some people can. It's like, oh, if I could just like have like all these you know, random hookups, it'd be amazing. And I think the reason why a lot of guys have this idea is because they're coming from this porn mentality. And the porn mentality is entirely a fantasy sort of thing, right? It's something that happens in a fantastical world that is disconnected from reality. And they assume that when they engage in hookup culture, it's the same sort of thing. But it's not. There's much more to it. There's far more emotionality to it. Um, even and and that emotionality, it is present even if there is not an emotional connection, which actually makes the emotional aspect weirder. It's like okay, so you and a person, you go out, you use each other for their, for your you know for their bodies, um, and there's no emotional spark between you and them. Well, guess what? There's still emotions, and that emotion is just like, Ew, what what mm -hmm. am I doing? What is this? Especially after the act. After, you know, all that lustful energy has gotten burnt off, then what you have is this weird sort of void. You have this strange sort of emptiness that comes comes over you. And uh, often it can be associated with a bunch of other feelings as well. And you're going to probably want to stuff them down. And as you stuff them down, what ends up happening is you end up disconnecting to that inner voice and that inner guidance. And as soon as you disconnect from that inner voice and inner guidance, you lose your ability to really find your spiritual path in life. Because in order for you to find your real path, to find the path where you thrive, to find the path where you're on fire, where you're just like vibrating with life and energy, you got to be in tune with that voice. 
and that voice is going to guide you. It's going to, you know, you're going to think about one option. You're going to feel it resonate. You're going to think about another option. You're going to feel it go clunk. And it's like, oh, all right, I just got to find the parts where it sparks and, you know, avoid the spots where it feels like it goes dead. But like, if you're doing something like that, I can almost guarantee you're going to have a lot of that dead energy come up. And you're not going to want to feel it. And so you're going to push it down. And that's basically you throwing your compass away, your life compass away. And uh, if you do that, you're not going to get somewhere you want to go. Almost guaranteed. And that's what he was saying there is like, you know, 30 years from now, you get to come on stage and tell us how it worked out for you. And, you know, I agree with them that there's a uh, there's a low chance of that happening in a favorable way. Uh, either you're going to have a change of heart or um, you're just going to be uh, very depressed and you're going to just keep trying to chase that high. Because there's many different ways to get stimulation and excitement. Okay, You can get your dopamine jacked up like crazy but never reach any sort of fulfillment. And that's really what we're all looking for. We're looking for that that warm glow of satisfaction and fulfillment in life that lets us feel like, hey, my life is good. I love my life. I love who I am. And I love the people who are, surra- are, are connected to me. And if you can get to that point, well, hey, it's like you almost don't even need that much stimulation. You don't need to be chasing these highs anymore. You don't need this crazy drama. You just got like this, this like, Mm, this goodness. It's like that that feeling of like a, a delicious, healthy meal. It's like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. not like cocaine and coke, cocaine and cake, but <laughs> it's actually better. It's like, yeah, that that'll get you a big old spike, but it doesn't leave you feeling good afterward. And you know, I would argue it doesn't even feel good during the fact. It's just there's so much stimulation that you can't hear your your dissatisfaction while you're engaged in that sort of behavior. 